Welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2. This chapter is on financial liabilities and provisions. I'm going to talk a bit about how these videos are structured now in our first video, and then in subsequent videos, I'll just dive right in. Each larger uh, chunk of topics, so what may typically correspond to a chapter, will start off with this title slide uh, reminding you of the course that you're in as well as uh, the, the umbrella of topics that this falls under. So we're still in our Intermediate Financial Accounting 2 course and this week we're looking at financial liabilities and provisions. That under financial liabilities and provisions, our first topic is to look at the liability definition and categories. This entire video will be on one topic. Each topic will typically have one, maybe two, possibly as many as three videos. Each video, except for this one, which has a little bit more explaining, uh, will be typically four to six minutes. Each video will have MCQs. If they are not about course content, um, they will be something to kind of um, prime on the topic that you just saw, either knowledge-based or application-based. I will say, um, uh, I'll give you an example of when we see one, but essentially I will read out the MCQ and then I'll pause. And when I pause, I won't be prompting you each time to pause the video and to think of an answer, uh, but rather I will just do that because uh, me reminding you to pause the video after reading an MCQ, after a while, you're like, mm-hmm, okay, like we know. Uh, and then um, after kind of, I'll, I'll leave it for a bit of a break and then I'll come back and, and give you the answer. So inherently in there, you would be pausing. Alrighty, pitter patter, let's get at our topic one, liability, definition, and categories. We are setting the stage here to understand this side of the statement of financial position, the liabilities. I want you to think, when thinking of definition of a liability, of past, present, future. Because in order to be a liability, it must meet all of these. Not two of these, not one of these, all of these. It must be the result of a past transaction that represents a present obligation that we cannot get out of, that will result in the future sacrifices, uh, sacrifice of assets or service. So past, present, future. Now, you might see these liabilities come up because of a legal obligation. You went out, you purchased goods on account, um, you told them you'd pay them later. That was the result of a past transaction. You purchased the goods. It represents a present obligation. Yep, you told them that you would settle up with them in the future. And then when you get the invoice in the mail, um, you are going to pay it, resulting in a future outflow of economic resources. Um, in that instance, cash, past, present, future. You may also have a constructive obligation. So perhaps there wasn't a legal obligation or exchange, but something that came um, by way of, it, it just happens um, to be from a policy or historical practice. An example of a constructive obligation may be at a retail store. I tend to think of Costco. Costco will let you, at least it did um, last time I checked, return about anything. They, um, sure, in their terms and conditions, which um, it may, may constitute a legal obligation as well, but you know, there's some gray area, so it's not always going to be super clear between the two, but constructively, you have an issue, um, you bring it in, you get a refund. Now, there's some other stores out there. Um, I believe Walmart would take things back even outside of the stated terms. Uh, so even more in this gray zone, even more towards the constructive versus the legal obligation. So I remember somebody saying that they returned or their uncle returned a car battery, you know, five years later, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, you know, the moment that Walmart kind of has this as their norm, they are seen as being somebody that will be very customer, you know, focused, friendly, um, accepting, and they need to put a bigger liability on their sheet because they know that the moment that $100,000 worth of goods walk out the store, um, that as a result of that sale, that past sale, there's going to be some percentage of those people that come back with their five years with their car battery. Um, so right now, today, because they sold that, they know that some percentage will result in a future outflow of cash going back. 
So they need to record a liability, a provision for that. So whether or not something is legal or constructive, and again, there's some overlap here, I want you to think of a term that you will hear me talk about a lot this term, substance over form. Form is the law. It's, you know, what is stated. Substance is what is this actually mean? Substance over form is a principle in accounting and it is, it, it just transcends. So it means that it doesn't matter what the lawyers wrote. It doesn't mean um, what somebody could interpret it as. What is the real you know, meat of this situation? That's what we need to account for. That is why we're not going to be replaced by robots anytime soon because we need to look at substance over form and reflect the economic reality of the situation. There are a number of categories of liabilities. Something can be either financial liability or non-financial. So we'll talk about the definition of a financial liability first. So this is something, a liability, the past, present, future, uh, that requires cash to settle. So this could be something like a loan payable. And typically, this creates um, somebody that has a financial liability for one party would have a financial asset for another. So, which makes sense because if it requires cash to settle a financial liability, then it requires cash to be received to, um, as if you were the holder of a financial asset. Now, the non-financial liability is everything else. So if it doesn't meet the definition of a financial liability, then it's a non-financial liability. And an example of that would be uh, a provision. If it was a provision um, that resulted in, say, um, say a store, you know, had a really good, not return policy, but a really good warranty. So we'll see warranty and provisions kind of used interchangeably because warranties are a type of provision where, you know, instead of giving you a new vacuum cleaner, the store will take in your vacuum cleaner and they will repair it. And they need to put aside a provision to show that they will be repair, paying somebody to repair your vacuum cleaner. So while they will be spending money um, or parts and services, they will be having an economic outflow that represents Presents a liability to fix, you know, one in every hundred or so uh, vacuum cleaners that go out. Um, they are not going to be refunding the uh, the customers directly. So in that instance, that would be an example of a non-financial liability. Categories of financial liabilities. So items that liabilities that will be settled in cash. We have fair value through profit and loss, which would be if a um, company, um, they're typically sold in the short term. And they could also be uh, designated as fair value through profit and loss by management. So an example would be for hedging purposes. And whenever it is fair value through profit and loss, that means that any fluctuations in the fair value will go through the income statement. And because it goes to the income statement, if there are any transaction costs associated with this um, financial liability, that is expensed immediately, which inherently makes sense because if you're going to have something that fluctuates in value up and down, go through the profit and loss statement, why would you capitalize or associate any transaction costs just to then expense them? So we say, you know, <laughs> uh, pass, don't, you know, what is it? Don't pass go, just don't, don't go stop, go immediately, just expense them. Okay. So there is an exception there. If there is a case where under IFRS, where the value is changed um, by the credit risk, that will go through OCI. Um, that is not going to be examinable, but I just want you to be aware in case that comes up in a subsequent course for you, a uh, subsequent course at uh, graduate level accounting. So other financial liabilities are not going through financial uh, fair value through profit and loss and instead are at amortized cost. Now typically we just say cost 
but it, we say amortized cost uh, to sound a little bit fancy, but also to encapsulate the uh, time value of money. So if you have, <laughs> if you have um, something and we say, okay, recorded at amortized cost, if it's less than a year, there are there's not going to be anything to amortize to reflect the time value of money because we are here. But we say the term amortized cost to reflect the fact that if it had been longer than a year, then um, then it would be reflect. It would have some um, some finance, some accretion that would reflect that. Okay, which leads us to the next part: classifying liabilities as either current or long term. Current will be settled, we'll just say within the next 12 months. That's a really good bar. Know that it is typically operating cycle, but let's let's use 12 months. And long-term liabilities will be anything longer than that 12-month period. If an item is a long-term liability, then the way this is presented on the statement of financial position is to show the current portion, what's due within the next 12 months, separately from the long-term liability, the remainder, so anything due longer than 12 months. So this makes a bit more sense when we tie into the amortized cost. So what we're going to be doing with um, all other items that weren't designated as fair value through profit and loss. If it's amortized cost, then what we should start thinking and start kind of linking in our minds is that the long-term portion will be discounted and if anytime we discount it we're making it you know smaller right now but we're going to have to make it bigger as the um, settlement date comes due and if we're making a liability bigger that's a credit where is that other side where is that debit so start thinking about that um, and um, and we'll see that in subsequent slides I'm um, not in this uh, video but where if we're making a liability bigger and we need a debit what bucket will that go into and I'll talk a bit more about buckets in a subsequent topic all right so you guys have done fabulous it is time for our question which the following is not a part of the definition of a liability. Which of the following is not part of a definition of a liability? Results from a contractual agreement. Yes, something that is a contractual agreement may be a part of the liability umbrella. But in order to be defined as a liability, it needs to be past, present, future. The result of a past transaction or event that represents a current obligation that we cannot get out of that will result in the future outflow of economic resources. Let's do one more question. True or false? When a financial liability is classified as fair value through profit and loss, transaction costs must be expensed. When a financial liability is classified as fair value through profit and loss, transaction costs must be expensed. The answer is true. Fair value through profit and loss means the economic reality of what this liability is presently um, presently in the marketplace. It goes up and down as your liability on the statement of financial position. So if it goes up or down, that means the other side is the income statement. So anytime you have transaction costs associated with a fair value through profit and loss item, the transaction costs are just expensed right away. Put them to the income statement rather than you know coupling them to this financial liability and then writing them off the next time you're doing a fair value through profit and loss um, and comparing to what it is in the marketplace against other uh, financial liabilities. So they are immediately expensed. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next video.